All right. How's everybody doing today? Uh, fortunate enough to have Jeff Butler on today for our very first episode of Green to Red. Uh, Jeff is with the City of Springfield Fire Department, and uh, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, Jeff, uh, if you could just uh, tell us about your fire service career, where you're at now, and, and what you're doing in the fire service. Yeah, I'm, we're in Springfield, Missouri. There's probably 6,000 6, Springfields in America, so I should <laughs> clarify that. Missouri, uh, Springfield is the uh, third largest city in Missouri behind St. Louis, Kansas City. Uh, we're a profesh all professional department, um, okay. about uh, 220 or so firefighters uh, or personnel that work for the department. I believe that's the, an accurate number. Um, I've been there for eight years. I came on in 2012, um, promoted from a, I was a firefighter for about five years and then promoted up to a rescue specialist, which in our department is a promoted position. We have an equipment operator and rescue specialist are our two promoted positions, the first promotion positions. I uh, did the rescue job for about three years, uh, I think about three years, maybe a little short. And then just recently this year in January, promoted to lieutenant. Uh, so now I'm a lieutenant on a, on Engine 8 here in Springfield. All right, very good, very good, sounds good. And so uh, with that, let's now uh, go left of bang and, and, and rewind the clock and tell, you could tell us about how you got here uh, in your military background specifically. Yeah, my, so there's a big jump, or there's a big uh, space between my military time and my fire time, which was filled by the federal government. I worked, uh, I, I went through ROTC, um, to Georgetown University. Um, so I, as a Naval officer, came out, graduated in uh, May of 99, 21 years ago, and went straight into BUDS, uh, basic underwater demolition SEAL training. Um, I, was, I got accepted into that program out of ROTC. I uh, graduated in May and, and classed up in my BUDS class in July, I believe he classed up. So it was a pretty quick turnaround, which was nice. Um, did uh, finish that on my first try, thankfully. Nobody wants to take any longer in that process than they have to. Uh, finished that uh, early 2000, and then, um, which at the time was done out in Virginia Beach with my uh, platoon and my SEAL team. Um, and then did I deploy? I only deployed once with my SEAL uh, SEAL team. Uh, got back, went, became a plank owner or an original member of uh, a new SEAL team they created back in 2002. Um, was there for only about a year and a half or so, and then uh, made the transition over to uh, the CIA. I applied to the CIA uh, operations division and uh, got accepted there, moved over there, um, and then trained all the way up through that program to become a um, clandestine uh, collector for the CIA operations um, and the operations section. And uh, was there for about seven years. Um, left there, got my left there with a leave a, on a leave without pay um, time frame or chunk of time to get my master's. Uh, so I came back. I came here to Missouri to get my master's because my wife at the time was working here uh, as a doctor, and uh, and then um, ended up had family issues and it, we ended up getting divorced. And I had to, I wanted to stay in Missouri. Uh, where I had never lived before. I'd never, I didn't grow up here. It was the first time I'd ever lived here. Okay. And I was like, well, I got to find something to do in Missouri. Um, <laughs> I can't have a real job. I haven't had one yet. Like, why start now? <laughs> so I, I had I had to find something to keep me busy and interested. And right. fire, fire seemed like a, a good fit, really, even though I knew almost nothing about it other than uh, okay. everyone I'd ever talked to about it loved it, uh, which seemed, you know, good enough for me. And that was kind of a ringing endorsement. And uh, I applied and got accepted and off I went. So very much, and so total time, uh, uh, Navy, it's SEAL team, and total time CIA was- uh, About 11 years. 11 years, okay. So, so to that point, it's not that you have to be on your first contract to come into the fire service. And, and oh, no. Yeah. I, and I was the oldest guy in my recruit academy um, by about six or seven years. I was 35 when I went through uh, my fire academy. Um, but that doesn't, that doesn't stop anybody. I mean, you got to be in good shape whether you're 22 or 35 and able to do the job. You know, there's, it's a physically demanding job, but I, I felt fine. It, you know, there's a point where you might be too old to apply to a career department. And that has to do with 
physical ability to do the job and then how much time you'd have to put in to get vested in the pension and all that stuff. But um, 35 was perfectly fine for that. Yeah. And to that point, just before we got on, I was telling uh, Jeff about a story where we had a, a member that was a retired Lieutenant Colonel retired from the army as a Lieutenant Colonel from the 82nd and then starts his second career. Um, so that, and it just depends on the fire department. And so that's a, a key, I think, learning moment for anybody who's looking at potentially doing this is that, you know, talk with your, the agency you're looking at and see what those restrictions are and don't let age be an inhibitor. Uh, let your fitness level do that for you. <laughs> yeah, is, as you probably know, each department's got requirements. Um, yes. Ours for a time had a requirement where you had to come on with firefighter one and two already. Okay. I, I didn't have any of that. I didn't have an ENT license or anything. So I, I was lucky enough when I came on, they accepted um, so many years of military service or so many hour, credit hours of college or firefighter one and two uh, or an EMT license. So if you fulfilled any one of those four, you could get hired on. So I, mine fell under the college requirement and the military service requirement. And I, half our class actually was uh, veterans. Four of us yeah. were veterans coming out of the military and four were uh, guys that had fire fought uh, and the surrounding counties. Gotcha. So it was a good mix. Uh, gotcha. And then you, you already mentioned uh, your MOS, your, your, your job in the military was SEAL. Uh, any deployments under your belt? Yeah, I deployed right after 9-11 um, to the European Command uh, to SOC, your Special Operations Command Europe. Um, and then, and that, and that was part of the big reason I went to the CIA is, uh, you know, at the time, everybody thought the the war in Afghanistan was going to be real short. I mean, haha, that's funny to look back at now. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it you know, there was kind of this sense of we got deployed to Europe and thought, man, we just missed the war, you know. What did we do all this for? And it was kind of, I wouldn't say I was down about it, but I was disappointed. And um, my degree was in international affairs and international politics. And I I knew the CIA was still was still working there, and I was like, man, I'm going to make this jump and and try to get some time over there at the CIA, which which worked, and I, I was able to do it. But I mean, the SEAL team is going to be in there for the next <laughs> until now, so right, it was a premature jump. But I, but I'm perfectly happy I did it. I, I loved working at the CIA. So and then so that path, you know, uh, Navy SEAL, CIA, and then you alluded to that you were just basically looking when you got out to see what was next. So you you didn't have firefighting in your background. You didn't have a family history. There was no, was there any specific inclination that got to the fire service, particularly comparing it to maybe other public safety or public service jobs? I, I had one maternal, like three times great grandfather that I never knew. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a fire chief in Atlanta, Georgia, but that weighed zero. I actually didn't even find that out until after I joined the fire department. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. But no, um, I just kind of weighed, uh, I didn't even, re I didn't really think about uh, police because it just didn't fit for my personality. I, for whatever reason, it wasn't a, something I even really considered. Mm -hmm. um, fire just seemed like I had some medical training in the, in the military. All SEALs do um, like some basic. Um, uh, it's not EMTB even. It's below that, but it's pretty, pretty basic. But, it, but it's still at the same time advanced enough where I enjoyed it and I knew I could do that. And then uh, the, really it was the allure of the, um, kind of the adrenaline and the no, no two shifts ever being the same and not having a, a firefighter, a firefighter life as everyone that works in that job knows is all about schedules. And we have very, we have schedules that never change, but at the same time, it's, and that all goes right out the window when a call comes in, which I really like, because I, I like showing up and not knowing what's going to be waiting for me that day. You know, I generally know it's going to be a fire or a car wreck or a, someone giving birth on the side of the road, but you know, the challenge right. of not knowing exactly what is going to hit us was a, was a draw for me. So yeah, let's pick up on that. I mean, that, that uh, I'm right with you. That's a key thing. And what makes this, uh, I think a, a, a relatively easy transition. What, what other things about firefighting did, that you identify with either before, or maybe you didn't find out till afterwards that you said, Oh, this, this really is a good fit. Uh, the, the whole, um, milieu of a uh, small unit. I mean, a fire company is a small unit. It's a smaller unit than most military units are by far. It's, there's four of us on my engine. Um, so I like uh, from being in a small unit in the SEALs uh, and really even at the CIA, we, wor we worked in small units. A station might be five, five people, guys and girls, you know, up to, there's bigger ones obviously, but, mm -hmm. but in it, it really, it's a, they were both jobs in which I worked with a small unit of people 
to accomplish uh, a very set and specific set of tasks. Um, and you never doubted what those were. I always knew what our job was. I, I loved that job and I liked that about the job, not showing up to work and being like, what am I doing here today? You know, like, I'm sure, I don't know if there is or not, but I'm sure there are some jobs out there that are, you just kind of show up and you're like, well, what's today we're going to do? I don't know. I'm, I'm here again. You know, mm -hmm. I never really had that feeling. It was always, there was always something to do, always a, a mission, always a, a purpose. And I, I, I got the sense that firefighting was, was the same. And the purpose just happened to be helping the public and putting out fires and treating injured people and stuff. Uh, but it's, so it's different than the SEALs and the CIA, but at the same time, it's still as focused and as, um, you know, as purposeful as those missions were. Yeah, very uh, defined. I, I would yeah. say that that to me, because I, I considered the uh, police coming out, because again, the skill sets like, what are you going to do? House cleaning, food service, <laughs> police, fire. And uh, that defined mission, that very concrete objective, cats in a tree, we're going to get the cat out of the tree. This person's broken leg, we're going to fix them in the hospital, house is on fire, fire's out, we're moving on. Yeah. Um, so that, that part, uh, I think ties in with what you're saying. It's very defined. Mm -hmm. so, and the fact well, that everybody on that crew or in that unit knows that and is all, everybody there is there presumably to work towards that. So, you know, no one signs up for fire to be a firefighter without, with, uh, minus the expectation that they're going to fight fire. So they all want to do it. In fact, we love doing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that too is similar to the CIA and the SEALs is everybody's there because they want to be there and they want to do the job, uh, which is, can be rare. And is, if you don't have that, is not quite as fun of a um, career setting as it is when everybody does have that same focus, I think. Anyway. Yeah, good to go. Good to go. Uh, so we talk, you, you talked about some of the similarities and what, a, what you think ties in. What are some of the differences? What, what would you say to somebody who's coming out saying, well, this part is definitely different, good, bad, or indifferent? Um, it, the, the, the biggest difference for me is my first two, uh, career paths were com almost completely internationally focused where I was go leaving the country on behalf of the country to do things outside of my community, outside of America. This is the egg. It couldn't be 180 degrees more opposite. This is everything is about your community and you live and work inside of your in a, in the, um, a zone with your neighbors, you know, it's your people that are that you're going out treating or putting out their fires are people you know sometimes intimately. Um, so that was a big difference. Was it was much more of a sense of uh, being a, a servant of the community. Where you still have you know you still know you're you're serving the nation when you're at the CIA and the and in the military. But that's a more ill-defined or sort of that doesn't come in that doesn't concretely affect you on a daily basis like it does when you're serving your local community and you are literally like pulling up on a car wreck and you, and your gut is like, Oh no, I know this, that car. And you know, you see, and you're seeing somebody, you know, that's hurt in a car accident. That's a much more visceral um, thing. So that was a, that's a big difference is the, and it's a, in my opinion, a good difference. Um, I like being, I like the feeling of being, a, everyone knows me at my kids' schools and mm -hmm. um, like at basketball games and soccer games as, as a firefighter, you know, oh, he's one of our firefighters. That's one of our guys, you know, so like that's a nice feeling when people appreciate you and you're so intimately involved in the local community. That was the biggest difference I thought. Nice. Good... Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so right now your, your path in the fire service, where, where are you at? You said you're an engine lieutenant, you know, where, where do you see yourself going? What, what does the future hold for you in the fire service? Yeah, well, I, so I will, um, I will make a uh, station captain um, through attrition. We, that's not a, um, tested position for us. So a lieutenant, you know, based on seniority and position will eventually uh, make his way up to a captain uh, based on retirements and things like that. So that you know, that's a given, uh, assuming I make it through my probationary period and don't do anything extremely stupid and get demoted. <laughs> I don't want to say it's a given. <laughs> and then um, I think the majority of people, you know, ride out their careers at, at captain or uh, even maybe one promoted position like equipment operator. I don't, I might, I, I've thought about going for battalion chief. I think that seems like a fun job. I like the challenge of, um, I have a really analytical part of my brain anyways, really analytical. And I like the idea of staffing in the morning and making sure everybody, you know, that's a big chore for a battalion to a battalion chief runs, as you know, I don't have to tell you, but for those listening mm -hmm. run, you know, in our city, we only have um, two battalions cause it's not a huge city. Um, we have 12 stations 
and each battalion runs six of those stations and manages half the city, essentially the fire um, resources for half the city. Um, so it's a it's a challenge. You have to make sure you have enough staffing every day, and then uh, they run the bigger fires and the real complicated scenes, and mm -hmm. they go to every single fire. Um, so you're still it, it's a, still a chief or a leadership position, a pretty high level one, uh, but it's also still getting to work in the day to day um, firefighting world. And you're still on a 24 hour shift. You know, you're not an administrative chief. that's a working at headquarters, you know, 40 hours a week. So the appeal of that to me seems, seems good. That's kind of as far as I've seen myself at this point going, and that's still down the road. Uh, you know, lots of things can change between here and there. Yeah. And I think you hit on something that's important for somebody to some, for people coming out to understand, because I, I didn't have that is that the fire service is nowhere near as, as uh, homogenous as, as the military in a sense, in that every fire department's a little bit different, the rank structure, the scope of responsibilities, a, a, a captain in one department may be a, a rank above lieutenant and some departments don't have lieutenants and the scope of responsibility for battalion chief differs based on the size of the organization and, and even the titles are sometimes different so that can be confusing for somebody who's coming out thinking oh a captain is you know a mid-level or senior leader and you know what that looks like in each organization may be a little bit different so that's important for somebody to, to find out before they they jump into an organization yeah, it was described to me before as I was applying as a paramilitary, not paramilitary in the sense of just almost military uh, rank structure in the sense that it is a hierarchy and it's a span of control. And We adhere to that pretty tightly. You know, it's supposed to be one supervisor supervising less than five people um, and, and upwards. And uh, they, they adhere to that pretty well. And it, so it is structured similarly to the military, uh, but like you said, different in terms of who does what and what the rank is called and uh, you learn it pretty and coming out of the military, honestly, you have good, I think it gives you a really good um, feel for how that any kind of rank structure works. Cause you know, in the military that your senior enlisted guys are have a certain status and uh, have a certain seniority that is valued by everyone, including the officers, you know, the officers have um, the ultimate responsibility and, or, mm -hmm. you know, do like paperwork. So everybody kind of in the military knows how that works. Well, it's very similar in the fire service. It's, it's different in many ways because all the officers that were also firefighters. Um, so they've all worked their way up through the ranks. Uh, but, it, but, but at the same time, a lot of things are the same. The officer does all the paperwork and has the ultimate responsibility. So it, it was an easy transition in terms of the hierarchy. And they even, um, I think they appreciate military prior military, um, applicants for that reason because they know they're going to fit into that pretty easily and have, they have a good sense of authority and uh, rank and what it means and how it translates into daily life at the fire department yeah right on i mean and there's just a lot of when you look at the skill set coming out of the military and what the fire service uh, uh prioritizes it, there's a lot of overlap in there which is really the the function of this is to help dial people in that are coming out of the service that, Hey, this is a possibility for a lot of good reasons. And, and it can be a, a solid fit. Uh, one of the things that, one of the reasons I, I asked you to be the, the first one out on this, uh, on this idea of, of helping spread the word for those folks coming out is you actually wrote an article on this. And uh, what are some of the, the things that you also identified in that article that maybe we haven't hit on that are, that are key? I, oh, man, I wrote, you just caught me. I wrote that article like six years ago or five years ago. I don't even remember exactly what I put in there. I'm sure it's the same exact stuff I'm saying. Now, but I, don't ha I didn't have any revelatory changes in my mind since. I was really new when I wrote that. In fact, I right. uh, had been on the department for like a year, I think. Um, and so at the time, that kind of popped into my brain. Like, man, I, I wish other people would do this. Yes. And uh, that's why I wrote it, but I, I don't remember exactly the points. I'm sure there, I know I've, I've mentioned a uh, sense of mission and purpose and serving yep. the community and all those things that nothing's changed since I wrote it, but I, I couldn't tell you exactly what I wrote. Yeah, no, no worries. No, it, I'm, I'm hoping if I can figure out the technology to, to link that article so oh, people good. can read it, because it really is a very tight summary of what those things are. And I think you talked about team dynamics in, in that small yeah. unit, uh, exactly what you talked about. Uh, being just right down the road. I mean, you're, you're not deployed across the, the globe or stuck in a big gray ship somewhere in the middle of nowhere where your best chance to get home is days or weeks. Uh, if there's something wrong, like literally you're a phone call away uh, and depending on exactly where you live in, in that community or close to that community, it, 
could be minutes, maybe a couple hours. But uh, yeah, that's a, sure. and that's a huge bonus coming out of the military because I mean, a department in the military, you, you at least when I was in, it was r- very routine for guys to miss births of kids and uh, big family events. Well, in the fire service, you can almost always work something out with a trade of your shift or, I mean, sick time and vacation time. Mm-hmm. Uh, like if a, if a kid has got some bad illness, you know, in the military, it's going to take a pretty significant illness to get you sent home from deployment. Whereas, you know, in the fire service, you're, like you said, you're three miles from your house and you can be like, Hey chief, I got to go. My youngest just fell out of a tree and broke his arm. And uh, you just take your sick time and you go and they, they call in somebody on overtime. I mean, it's a really nice, um, even though you're gone from your family for 24 hours at a time, or right. in our case, it's 24, seven or uh, 24, 48. So 24 on 48 off. Uh, but even if you're on a 48 hour on 96 hour off cycle, you know, you're the most you're gone from your family's two days at a time. Um, and that sounds worse than it is. It's it just, you're everybody adjusts to it pretty easily. I have found, but you still get those phone calls that are, you know, like, Hey, the dryer's on fire. <laughs> and you're, I know I saw it just came in on the cat. I, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. It's on its way, right? <laughs> no, absolutely. Like miles away. That, getting that call when you're in the middle of Afghanistan and you're like, I don't know what to do for you. Yeah, I can't, can't help you. I, I sympathize. I I really do. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and and to your point, I know for when my kids were younger, uh, if if I was working on Christmas, and and, and just so it's clear, you, some, you do have to miss some holidays and birthdays, but you can adapt to that. So my kids, you know, when they're young, we just celebrate Christmas on the 24th when I was home. And all they knew is they were riding around in their new stuff and all the neighbor kids were like, Hey, what, what happened? Where's my stuff? It's like, yeah, sorry. We get it a day early. So yeah, there's. We're in Father's Day uh, last week on uh, on Saturday because I worked on Sunday. Yeah, it's fine. You adjust, you know, you do it a day early. Yeah. It works out good for everybody. Absolutely. 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 So Jeff, any, any closing thoughts? Any, is there any closing thoughts on if you were talking to somebody, whether it's somebody coming out of the, potentially Navy SEALs or just anybody in the service and you were going to talk to them, anything that you would, uh, any offer, any advice you would offer? Uh, yeah. And I have, uh, I have talked to guys coming out of the SEAL teams and other um, units that wanted to go to fire and sought me out because um, I'm on Twitter and they had seen, I had written about it. And uh, I always tell them, I was, I always say, yeah, do it. If you're at all thinking about it, at least look into it. Um, I always tell them to go to their local, uh, research their local department. So see what it is. If it's a volunteer department um, or whether it's a professional paid department, mm-hmm. um, kind of figure out, you know, A, if it's a, a lifestyle and a department they want to work for. Because, um, you know, a volunteer fire, most American, most people, maybe some people don't know this, but uh, most fire departments in America are volunteer departments mm-hmm. um, and operate very differently than what I'm describing. Um, but it doesn't mean it wouldn't be a good fit for a guy in the military. So I tell him to kind of look into those things and uh, uh, explain the shift uh, structure and, um, you know, make sure they know that depending on their department, they'll have to do medicine, you know, at least at EMT level, sometimes paramedic is required. And I just kind of tell them those kind of things and say, you know, are you comfortable with that? And I always tell them how that firefighting is fun. Like the actual job of fighting fire is great and they'll Mm -hmm. love it. Um, if they're at all considering it to definitely look into it and, uh, I have, I have not regretted a single day since transitioning over. It's been a blast and I work with great people and have a great department. So it's like anything else. I'm sure there's some departments that aren't as good as others and may have not as good a reputation. I don't know. But mine, mine's been great. So awesome. you always got to do your homework. You know, yeah. You know. No, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Jeff, I really appreciate your time. Do you have a uh, social media, I guess, handle is, is there or, <laughs> You want to put something out there for people to follow you and then maybe they can hit you up. Uh, yeah, I, I occasionally write for um, Sandbox News. Um, I'll plug those guys. Okay. Uh, in fact, I should, I'm hoping to write another article on transitioning from military to fire for them here real soon. Oh, awesome. Based on our discussions. Yeah. Just kind of update that and write it run an updated version. Um, and then I'm on Twitter at uh, soft one. So it's S O F F R U one, the number one. I, I, opine on all kinds of things and make ridiculously stupid jokes and uh, <laughs> write a lot of memes and <laughs> it's so entertaining for everyone yeah no. controlled and uh, made fun of and laughed at and that's all good too good stuff good stuff well jeff thank you very much for your time uh we'll once i figure all this out i'll put the link or whatever on there and if uh whenever you get that article out we'll definitely include that 
Uh, so anybody, if you want to hit him up on uh, Twitter, message him and uh, me. I will have my information on there also uh, and, and find out a little bit more about it. Just really something to consider uh, more than anything else. So you don't end up in a dead end trap of, you know, living under fluorescent lights going, what am I doing? This is not what I want. So, and I've been there, been there. So all good stuff. So Jeff, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's fun to do. Good to go.